He and Paul Semensky are working on a podcast. He's a scientist and a biochemist. So, um, that's about it. She was his boss and he was like 18 or 19. She's 23 years older than him. Why would you accept a proposal from somebody who is like 18 or 19? Meanwhile, you are in your 40s. I've never really noticed. I've never, never noticed. really, never knew, you know noticed an age gap at all. From now on, I'm only referring to her as Aaron Taylor Johnson's geriatric wife. Honestly, I'm happy for him if he cheated on his wife. Let's get into it. Welcome back to the Let's Get Into It podcast with me, Sloan. Today, there are a bunch of topics I want to get into, and I want to establish in this episode that women can be predators too. We expose so many creeps in Hollywood. I mean, every blog has been talking about P. Diddy, which, you know, I'm guilty as well. I've been covering his story because his victims are coming forward. But there are also women in the industry who are just as bad. And I want to focus on Sam Taylor Johnson and her relationship relationship with her now husband, Aaron, because their age gap is questionable and there's no doubt that she met him when he was a minor. So that's our main topic of today's episode, but there are a few other topics I would like to cover as well, including Amanda Bynes, because I've never forgotten about Amanda Bynes. I mean, when we were doing the free Britney rallies in downtown LA and they were asking about Britney's conservatorship, we always mentioned that Amanda was also in a similar situation, which she got out of of, and then she's had some trouble since and recently she's been back on Instagram. Now I don't want to spend too much time looking at her page but as you can see she's got a new Instagram. She only has 230 followers so it is brand new. She's only posted a few times in the last month. There's one post like this one that she made. Where she talks about working on a coffee book I guess, like, you know, for a coffee table. There are also a few other random posts which are just kind of out there, um, including some announcements, which we're, we're gonna get into. So since Amanda got out of her conservatorship, she has gotten engaged to Paul, they have broken up, they have had several breakups which have been covered in the media and on my main YouTube channel. But it looks like now they are back together and working on a podcast. He and Paul Semensky are working on a podcast um, it's super impressive that Paul is going to be a part of it because he's a scientist and a biochemist. Now, I didn't know Paul was a biochemist. Uh, that's very interesting. Keep in mind that she met Paul, I believe, in rehab, or maybe it was a second how a second halfway house or Oxford House, whatever those are called. That's when they met, and I didn't think he was a bad guy, and I don't think he's an active biochemist, but, you know, she thinks he's interesting, so she wants to do a podcast show with him. And I think at this point, Amanda's fans just want to see her in whichever way she wants to present herself. Last time we saw her, she was on the street, she was naked, she went to the hospital. It wasn't a great look. So if she's going to be working on this podcast, which is about the entertainment industry, and they're filming, you know, in a studio in December. I mean, it's going to be a very different kind of uh, Amanda Bynes that we probably haven't seen before. Amanda also claims that she's going to be having guests come on to her podcast to be interviewed. But then she also explains that Paul's going to be doing a lot of the questioning and the heavy lifting. And it's just kind of an interesting take. And I'm not sure which celebrities would go on to her podcast. I think she'll kind of carry most of the weight in terms of um, just like topics of conversation like whenever he and I talk on the phone or I see him in person he's always um just so interesting and I cannot wait for him to co-host the podcast with me because they have such a wishy-washy relationship I don't really think it's a great idea that they are going in on this podcast together I mean if Amanda was doing her own podcast then I I mean I'll totally be watching it and even with Paul I will be watching it because I want to understand their dynamic even further but just because they are are so fragile i just don't think that going into a business venture together especially so public and like you know really amanda's first time on the scene again i don't think it's a great idea to have someone who has pushed her over the edge several times at first we're going to interview our friends and then we're hoping to take it mainstream and interview celebrities and artists like um i posted in the other video so um that's about it 
sorry about my lame ass sign off. I always like kind of sign off these Instagram videos like stupidly. So we will see if this coffee table book and this podcast will ever come into fruition. But Amanda has other obligations. Supposedly, she's going to be in Columbus, Ohio in December for Galaxy Con. Uh, I, she's supposed to be there for two days, I guess, meeting and greeting with fans. This is going to be her first public event since really her conservatorship. But keep in mind, back in January of this year, she was supposed to be on a panel for all that, which was going to be with her co-star. She was going to show up in person. It was in Connecticut. But literally days before she was supposed to go to this event, she had a breakdown and was put into psychiatric hold. So she never made it, which makes me question if it's a good idea for her to go and do this event in the first place. So again, last time she was supposed to be on a panel at an event, she ended up having a psychotic break that left her walking the streets of LA in the nude. Amanda ended up being 5150 and held at the hospital for some time until she was able to get out 30 days later. After she got out, she got into therapy and some more programs, but I mean, it hasn't really been that long since then, so I don't know if she's really ready to go and be at these events, but again, I question like who's like booking this, who's working with her. I mean, I don't think that Amanda's working on her own. Another topic I want to get into before we talk about Sam Taylor Johnson is Britney Spears' mother, Lynn Spears, because she got into a tiff with an old friend. Now, Lynn Spears is in court seeking a restraining order against her friend, Jacob Diamond, who she claims has been threatening her on social media. Now, Lynn Spears has a lot of questionable friends, partly because she's a questionable person, especially her role in this conservatorship. I don't think she has, uh, you know, morality on her side. So she's filing this restraining order against Jacob because essentially he's been talking crap about her online, which I've actually seen this post before and I've been waiting for this moment, but I didn't think Lynn Spears would get a full restraining order, probably just to shut him up. I guess she initially met Jacob because in 2019, she was interested in a book that he had written. I guess because Lynn Spears reached out to him, they decided they would maybe work together on a potential book photo shoot. I guess maybe Lynn was going to write another book. Keep in mind, she wrote a book through the storm, which was terrible and ended in lawsuits. It left Britney Spears really upset. So I don't really think Lynn should be writing another book. Plus, like Britney wrote hers. Her daughter, Jamie Lynn, wrote hers. Like, do we really need a book from Lynn? Another interesting fact about this restraining order is that Lynn accuses Jacob of getting very close to her small inner circle and her friends. So now her friends are friends with him. And now it's all messed probably because her friends aren't choosing her side so now she's going to the court to try to shut him up so that he isn't turning their very small circle against her interesting that she can't pay for her legal fees in britney's case yet she can go and pay for this something i found interesting about this restraining order is that it's not just filed by lynn but also her friend jansen now jansen claims in july 2023 that jacob became erratic and aggressive towards jansen and her family members at one point i guess jacob was having a conversation with one of Jansen's minor children and at that point Jacob became aggressive and Jansen's husband had to step in and call the police to have him forcefully removed from their family home. After this incident, Jacob started to post on his social media about Jansen and about Lynn Spears and their family members in a negative light. These posts are, according to Lynn, entirely false and meant to simply demean and harass them. They're claiming that Jacob's posts can really upset other people and, I guess, aggravate them, making them, you know, more of a threat. I guess kind of implying that, you know, Jacob is making posts and I've seen these posts about Britney's conservatorship and Lynn's involvement. And they're worried that there's going to be some Britney fans who are going to come after Lynn and her friend Jensen because, uh, you know, Jacob's kind of exposing how Lynn has been complicit and somewhat responsible. Like so many of us, I was following the, the Jacob Diamond situation. And it is a very hard thing to sort through. What I see is someone who is feeling a lot of pain right now. Uh, he lost a group of friends that he considered family that were in his life for over six years. And they just cut him out without any kind of concern about that at all. And he's in a lot of pain and he is revealing things 
And, you know, I, I've seen people have posted about him to smear his character and bring up other things, but I don't honestly think that that is pertinent to the situation. I think if you take it at face value, you see everything you need to see. Now that we're on the topic of bad parents, let's talk about Aaron Taylor Johnson's parents because who let their son go off with a 40 year old woman? Let's talk about their complete relationship because they met on set when he, they met on set when he was 18 and she was 42. They were engaged a year later. So they did just celebrate their 11 year wedding anniversary in June, 2023 this year. So they've been together for over a decade and it's so interesting how normalized this relationship has become. Supposedly, they met on set of a movie called Nowhere Boy in 2008 when Aaron was 18 years old. Though they both claim there was no funny business at all during filming, Aaron proposed a year later and jumped right into co-parenting Sam's two daughters. They now have children of their own together. They are a full family, but let's not get ahead of ourselves. Let's talk about how this all began. She was his boss and he was like 18 or 19. She's 23 years older than him. It's the power dynamics for me. And Sam's like, oh, he's the one that proposed to me. Why would you accept a proposal from somebody who is like 18 or 19? Meanwhile, you are in your 40s. You in your mind should be like, no. Honestly, you shouldn't even be attracted to this, okay? He looks so young. You should realize how inappropriate that is how immature he is, how much older you are, how much power and influence you have over somebody that young, even if he did fully believe that he was in love, you should understand how naive it is for him to actually do something crazy like that. I'm glad she brought up the idea that like, why is Sam even entertained by someone so young? We talk about these men in Hollywood and why, like, you know, what do they want with a 17 year old girl? Well, same goes for Sam. What does she want with this young boy? And isn't it kind of awkward? I mean, just to like see them together, just it's giving like mother and son. It's not giving very much like boyfriend girlfriend. Well, back in 2008, Sam was married. She was married to a guy named Jay Jopling. After 11 years of marriage, which is how long Sam and Aaron have been together, they had split up. They had two daughters together, and that was the same year that she worked on the film Nowhere Boy, where she met her future husband, Aaron Johnson. In 2009, Aaron proposes to Sam exactly one year to the minute after they met. Quote, as soon as we finished filming, he told me he was going to marry me, Sam said in an interview. We never had been on a date or even kissed okay girl yeah okay and he's proposing to you as a 19, 18 19 year old boy i don't think so they can try to rewrite history as much as they want to but there are people who were also there this article reads that aaron and sam insisted they kept it professional on set but a lot of people don't buy it Quote, Aaron first met Sam at her house when he auditioned for the role of a young John Lennon in the movie Nowhere Boy. Many see this as the first red flag, since a lot of stories within the Me Too movement began with an audition at the director's home or hotel room. This article continues, there was an attraction between the two, despite the fact that Sam was 42 while Aaron was still a teenager. Aaron's age at the time of their meeting is still unclear. Some publications reported he was 18, some say he was 19, other rumors claim that he was actually 17. There were also rumors that Sam was a family friend of Aaron's and knew him as a child. And I've actually seen these posts on Reddit before that she has been around his family growing up, which makes sense. I mean, he was a young actor in the industry while he was a child. She's been a big, you know, big time producer, director. So like their families knew each other. They could have like met multiple times while he was a young boy. And she just kind of like waited for the right moment where she had this power. She had this movie and he wanted that role. But according to Sam, she claims there was an intense connection between the two of them. Quote, we were very professional through the entire film, but everyone on set knew. And as soon as we finished, he told me he was going to marry me. One person who was a part of the film named Simon was quoted saying, whenever the rain comes, she runs inside the house arm in arm with 19 year old Aaron Johnson, who plays Lennon in the film. They dance and laugh like teenagers in love. I've never been on a film set with such a strange atmosphere. While the rest of the cast and crew are welcoming 
of their relationship. They were, uh, I guess, oblivious to the world. Let's talk about the idea that maybe Aaron was groomed by Sam, because that's what I'm thinking, because she had the power in this situation, and that's kind of how it begins most of the time. This article reads, most people take issue with Aaron and Sam's alleged romantic relationship while filming Nowhere Boy. The reason for this is that Sam was still Aaron's boss during this time. Aaron was also very young, and he just started to break out in movies. He was dependent on her to get the part, and she had the connections to potentially blacklist him. There was a clear power imbalance in this dynamic. One YouTuber named Gustav Jens was quoted saying that Aaron, you know, he's a young boy at this point. He's impulsive. That's normal for his age, but Sam should have known better. He also said that when the couple are interviewed together, Aaron always seems to look at Sam for approval when speaking which kind of makes me feel like like maybe Aaron has like mommy issues and that's why he's so into Sam. There are also comments that share that Aaron stopped speaking to his parents once he started getting with Sam, which is grooming 101. Another person commented, if an older person hits on a newly legal person, it's grooming, especially knowing what I know now, I hope he's okay. But really there was no stopping these two, whether Aaron stopped talking to his parents or whatever. I mean, there really was nothing that could break this immense bond that Sam had with this teenager. And it's just awkward to see. I mean, here they are at a film festival back in 2009 for the premiere of their movie as a couple. And of course, there were some people in the media criticizing this relationship. So back in 2009, Aaron addressed their age gap saying, I am an old soul and she's a young soul. We don't see an age gap, we just see each other. A little over six months later, they welcomed their first child together. Two years after that, they have a second child together together and then they are married. Supposedly Aaron likes to be at home and to be with his kids. I, I guess he like truly just gave up his entire 20s. Like he just has no 20s because he just like married this woman right off the bat and had these kids and I guess now he's like a young 20 year old guy just like hanging out with these kids and he has no problem with it. This article reads that there are many who believe the only reason Aaron is happy is that he never knew anything else. He didn't have any other option and one Reddit user claimed that Sam got got pregnant so quickly to trap Aaron. From their ages to their working relationship to the timing of Sam's pregnancy, all of these factors caused many to believe that Aaron was groomed and manipulated by his wife, Sam. Here's a clip of the couple speaking to Larry King about their relationship and the complicated dynamic. When the two of you first announced your engagement 10 years ago, there was some drama around it at the time. The there stigma was. was you were older, right? <laughs> right. How much older? 20-something years. 20 years. Now, that would be easily accepted today uh -huh. in the opposite. I'm 26 years yeah. older than my wife. Yeah. How many people ask you about that? Not so many. Nobody probably. cares. Yeah. People ask why me do you all think, the time. Why do you think? I feel like it's one of the last taboos. I feel like everyone comes at me with it in most interviews, and it's interesting. Um, because, like you said, I'm sure people don't ask you so often, but they do mm. ask me. Um, it makes people feel like they should have something to say and an opinion on it, but I've never really... I've um, never really noticed. I've, I've never, never really, noticed. never knew, you know, noticed an age gap at all. I think we just speak um, spiritually on a level. I just feel like we've only ever been connected as soulmates, so I, I've never really noticed. Yeah, he probably never really noticed because, again, he never knew anything else. He's always had her, her control, her there every step of the way. He's probably attached and scared to be without her. In 2017, Aaron calls Sam his soulmate in his Golden Globes acceptance speech. He was quoted saying that, I want to thank my wife for being there with me and supporting me through this. Thank you for putting up with me. Jesus, that was not very pleasant in this role. So you're my soulmate and I love you very very much. Aaron Taylor Johnson, Nocturnal Animals. Uh, wow, what a tremendous honor. Thank you, HFPA. Uh, and thank you, Focus. Thank you, Universal. I want to thank my wife for being there with me and supporting me uh, through this. I mean, and thank you for putting up with me. Jesus, that was not, uh, not very pleasant. And 
Aaron has always said that he doesn't like talking about his relationship and the fact that there was so much attention on their relationship early on in his career actually helped him in his career because he was able to dissociate from the press and the media and what other people think of him. In 2019, Sam said that she doesn't worry about their age gap at all. They've been together for over a decade, so they feel like it's less of a conversation now. It's not really a scandal they have to address. And it seems like things are going well because in 2021, Sam gets a tattoo tattoo of Aaron's name on her collarbone. Aaron also has a tattoo of Sam on his chest, so it looks like they both have tattoos of each other, so it must be real. I just don't like when couples get tattoos of each other. That's just like a thing I don't like. I mean, honestly, I don't really like tattoos. I have two on my body and I like, yeah, not a fan. I, uh, yeah. I'll get them removed at some point, but I do want to talk a little bit more about their dynamics because their relationship has <clears throat> blossomed. They have all these kids together. You know, uh, Sam actually had two other children before she got with Aaron, and he kind of assumed the role as a stepdad, which is still weird to see how this family has blended because her daughters aren't far in age from him. So it's kind of weird to think that he's like serving as a fatherly figure here. This beautiful man right here has just told Esquire recently that he knew he was going to be a young dad with a lot of kids. He told the interviewer that when he was around 10 or 11, he knew he was going to be a young dad. I was going to have a big family. I knew I was going to be a young father. I knew I was going to have many kids. And Aaron also became a stepfather when he was like 19 or 20 to Sam's two kids from her previous marriage with Jay Jopling. One of his stepdaughter is Angelica Jopling. I looked up how old she was. She was born in April 24th, 1997. Meanwhile, Aaron Taylor Johnson was born in June 13th, 1990. How do you become a stepdad to somebody who is literally seven years younger than you when you're not even grown yet? It is weird when the stepdad's age and the daughter's age makes more sense. That seven year age gap makes more sense than the stepdad and the mother's 23 year age gap. And I wonder how the kids do feel about him being their stepfather. But it's also interesting to see how they are always with each other. They don't have this space apart. So he really doesn't have any like free will to think about, you know, whether he's happy or not to be with her. He's constantly posting online how much he loves these kids. So they must have a great relationship. Maybe he's more of like a friend than a father, but in a uh, July 2022, we saw them on the red carpet together, showing face and not hiding their relationship at all. Even though I believe at this point, like there were stories going viral about their age gap and how she really, I guess, knew his family before and uh, just snagged him early on, essentially groomed him. In some interviews, Aaron speaks about his relationship with Sam, saying that he doesn't like being separated from her. It's well known in the industry that Sam will be wherever Aaron is. This led to a lot of his auditions because she has connections to people in the industry. What does simp mean? Simp. Put yeah. it in a sentence, love, because you no, just keep uh, okay. saying it like... He's such a simp for her. <laughs> Someone is overly submissive to someone they fancy, usually used to describe men yeah. chasing a partner when they're showing no signs of them being into them. So basically someone who's like whipped. Right, yeah. Like a whipped, yeah, a whipped a, yeah, person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think it's safe to say that Aaron fits the definition of a simp, but maybe not because there are some rumors that he has possibly cheated on his wife, Sam. So maybe he got some time away from her because supposedly he's been hanging out with someone named Joey King. Joey King is an actress best known for her roles in Ramona and Beezus, the act bullet train and the kissing booth and i guess some people now believe that she's got the role of aaron taylor johnson's mistress the internet's been fixated on the specific nature of this relationship claiming that aaron's been hooking up with joey after meeting her on the set of a movie titled bullet train kyle marissa who is a tiktoker we are fans of on this channel said that she received a blind item about their alleged relationship before diving into the details of of this message. So what is really going on between Joey and Aaron? Well, Kyle is claiming that this blind item says that there was a press trip for this movie Bullet Train and supposedly when they were in Paris promoting it, they were hooking up on the side. Now, when it comes to blind items, we don't know if it's reliable or not, but it's interesting and it did catch headlines. I mean, people picked it up and, you know, 
Aaron and Sam aren't the most popular celebrities, so it's interesting that this like rumor came to life. But it's probably, you know, it probably isn't true just for the fact that, I mean, Joey is also engaged. She's got her own relationship. But also keep in mind that this happens pretty often where two actors go off for a movie, they fall in love on set, and then during promotion, they're like announcing their relationship. That's pretty much how Sam and Aaron got together. But here is Kyle reading reading that blind item and it went viral. From now on, I'm only referring to her as Aaron Taylor Johnson's geriatric wife. That is until they get divorced because here is an Aaron Taylor Johnson and Joey King blind item. I don't know if they hooked up while filming, but this married A-list actor is hooking up with this A-list tween actress turned A minus B plus list adult actress during their press trip for the movie they shot. And the related headline is Joey King serves up a daring look at Bullet Train Paris photo call. And the blind item alleges that it happened during their Paris promotional trip for Bullet Train. Now again, we don't know if this relationship is reliable at all, but a lot of fans were excited to hear about this because a lot of people don't want to see Aaron with Sam. One person tweeted, On my way to become a Joey King fan account if these Aaron rumors are true. Another person writes, Aaron Taylor Johnson hooked up with Joey King? Another person writes, Oh, funny how I agree with cheating when Aaron Taylor Johnson does it. Another person wrote that if Aaron Taylor Johnson actually cheated, he's going to see all these people supporting him. Another person writes, good for Aaron if he gets away from his groomer, but everyone was saying that it was Joey King and she's engaged. So what about her man? Even though there's been a lot of commentary on this cheating scandal, neither of them have ever actually addressed it and they probably shouldn't because I guess addressing it would bring it to life even further. Though it does seem like they have disabled their comments on Instagram at this point, so they were trying to keep, I guess, some conversation conversation tame. That's actually the rumor and it's trending on Twitter, but honestly, I'm happy for him if he cheated on his wife with Joey Keen while they were in Japan on press because she took advantage of him. She used him and then manipulated and messed up his brain enough where he married her, had kids with her, is still to this day fucking her. So I'm glad that him and Joey Keen had their fun because they honestly fucking deserve it. I hope the rumors are true and I actually hope that they actually get fucking divorced because they he deserves to be fucking free. Now, I have to agree that there is some layer of like misogyny here because people are hating on Sam because she's an older woman. I mean, he just posted celebrating her 56th birthday. So, uh, yeah, there's there's a large age gap between them. And I really don't want to I don't hate on Sam because she's 56. I want to hate on Sam because her husband was a kid when she met him and knew his family and just a young, impressionable teenage boy who she somehow got a hold of and i do believe that like those videos say that like he was manipulated and she kind of like rewired his brain in some way and he could have had a very different life i mean maybe he is happy with her maybe he's convinced he's happy maybe he's truly happy we can't really say one way or the other i just don't want this to be a misogynistic like read on it i want it to be like more about the grooming aspect there is what I want to say, quite a fruity sex scene <laughs> that you are in, Aaron. And I was thinking when I was watching it, well, I was thinking many things, but mainly I was thinking, <laughs> Sam, what's it like directing your husband in a... Wait a damn minute. <laughs> ...sex scene with another woman? <laughs> But either way, the age gap does matter and people are going to have comments and thoughts about it because this isn't typical. Unfortunately, we live in a, I guess, a world where, you know, men are, they've been privileged opposed to like women. And there's been like, I mean, I guess we have like somewhat accepted like age gaps between men and women, but like. I mean, I still think it's kind of weird, like a 20 year age, 20 year age gap. Like I just, I mean, when I see some of my friends out here in LA and they're like going on dates with these guys that are so much older, I'm like, what are you guys even talking about? I mean, my boyfriend, we've got a 10 year age gap. I think that's perfect. I think that's acceptable. It's fine. I met him way, you know, in my late twenties. So I feel very comfortable and safe. I've already seen the world. There's something different about someone in their forties. Who's like hanging out with a teenager, someone where they have kids kind of close and age what was the reason everybody getting divorced except for these two dear god unrelated but related 
Every time I see the two of them together, I think that they are like a multiverse version, an alternate universe version of if Catherine Hardwick, the director of the first Twilight movie, had gotten together with, during filming, Jackson Rathbone, who played Jasper. Do y'all see it? Am I the only one? Either way, I hope you guys understand that there are women in the industry who can be creeps too. And there's no doubt in my mind that Sam is a little creepy in my opinion. But I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Comment below what you guys want me to talk about in next week's episode. And if you guys want me to show you a little bit more of my life because I've been thinking about it. But anyways, I'll see you guys soon and I hope you enjoyed this episode. Bye guys. Oh, my God.